<laughs> I got a view as well. I got this uh, national picture back again. Turns out the horizontal was playing up. Because it pin cushioned a bit, then the picture went back, it came back. Started tapping around in this body, tapping it, and it came back. The transform on air resistor and all that. Transistor and everything on there. It's not bad for soldering actually, this thing's pretty good for dry joints. There is a little bit here on the grounding, where it grounds at this plate. I wonder if it's a grounding issue, it might be somewhere. I'll get the soldering iron out and start touching up. I did some paint brushing on this board to get all the dust off. So it's a horizontal output problem we've got here. There's that transformer. That one there, that nice looking one. Well, be careful here, just trying to move it, see if those joints move, but better be very careful. Yeah, leaning near the neck there, that'll give you much room to work on these. This is how bloody TV should be made, I tell you. I can't pull that edge out anymore. Uh, we've got, the soldering looks good here, can't see any yet. It's in the power part where there's a lot of current and heat. Here, I'll start with those grounding things. Here's a grounding strap here, let's solder that. We've got a crack here, and let's go under here. It's grounding all this to the, um, this heat sink. Yeah, let's do some re-soldering. I like how it's got a delta gun style set up on this board here for the um, adjustments. It's definitely not a delta gun there. Definitely an inline gun. I know the National did say that they were delta guns, but they're not. It's definitely an inline gun. But it's larger than it's quite a larger than normal standard neck size in this tube, and the guns themselves are actually a lot bigger. So they are unusual, unusually large. The guns in this CRT. Look at that. And this is how you're supposed to build a TV. Anyway, let's get this um thing all repaired up. Had a massive uh breakdown at work so got half the shift off with three hours of work and a big machine breakdown the bloody uh this multi this bloody five hundred thousand dollar machine they got put in the friggin' the motor the motor that the shake the conveyor burnt out well the uh bearings went bad and it's only bloody six months old. It's a high end Italian made bloody shaker motor and the bearings are bad in it. I spent five hundred grand in this bloody machine only for this just to happen within six months. I should have uh yeah, it's just yeah, the shit you got to put up with. The way they make shit these days, it's just pathetic. Yeah, I like that Danger HV 373. I wonder if that's a date code. Not sure. Don't know. But it's definitely 70s. This is definitely one of the um, better built sets. Anyway, let's get soldering. Just, yeah, we're still trying to look for a good place to find in town on that. It turns out. I have to do what uh, Chris Renane did and get rid of a few, get rid of some BPC crappy TVs to save room. So, yeah. So that was the whole point. I wanted to preserve some modern TVs. I wanted to preserve them just for the sake of you know, have a couple of them that I could use. I'd bring them out. Who cares? But we mightn't have room to put them now if when we move. I have to, no choice but to throw them out. So. The bloody tip, local tip doesn't take him anymore because they've overfilled with TVs. So that's how much to the kind of the tip. The TVs and computers, the actual the landfill is dangerously overflowing, so they cancelled the scheme here. So you can't, the tip won't take him. You can smash them up and put them in the landfill, don't tell no one. And you want to get rid of them. So to make room for these ones, some modern ones have to die. But I am going to pull the circuit boards out of them, the newer ones, just to see how tears and solve, smash them up, put them in the cycle bin. The boards, I break them down, flybacks, put them in a box like that, put them all with them ones, take that, that's all nice. Compact, all the flybacks will fit in there. The capacitors and whatnot, did what I did in here, all the parts in there, little boxes. Keep what I really want into a small little compartment, easy fits in a small garden shed. And the rest. Well, I have no choice but to destroy it all. But yeah, we've got to definitely save room for these sets. 
These are just so hard to find now. And there's so many low lives out there fish taking them especially so. Yeah. These are definitely, definitely, definitely worth saving. I try and do all I bloody can to try and get a way of storing these things and using them every now and again. That's my attention to, to use them every now and then. That's my attention, yeah. Like I've got them here in the cave and I can use those every now and then. But really, if I get rid of, hopefully I can get a big enough man cave, I can set these TVs up in a space in the shed and I can actually use them every now and again. That's my intention. I might use them so much trying to wear the poor things out. You know, they're not gonna, they're too collectible to just use all flat out, so I just, yeah, I did the occasional viewing on them. We'll view that one one night, view that one another night, rotate them around. Just enjoy the, um, the beauty of these old sets. Would love to bloody get more, but A, there's communists running this town. You can't build so many sheds or have enough room, and B, there's yeah, the price. Yeah. It's a bloody communist society we live in, unfortunately. That old vintage circuit board small to it. Hmm. Man, I'll remember that one for the rest of my life. Which is really how you're supposed to build TVs. Like for nothing, bloody short. I should have checked something short now, shouldn't I? Careful here. Ah, oh, look at that. And that little bar still at the top there. Ah, oh, look at that. Back to normal. Oh, yeah, the Nationals back to normal. A uh, P thing. Chair to chair, do you want to turn it off? It's interesting how it does that. First thing you want to do is do this with a handle of a screwdriver. Insulated, of course. Just tapped. And watch the screen when I do that. Doesn't seem to want to respond to those taps, so that's a good sign. Nothing changes on the screen, see? Ooh, shit, be careful doing that, I tell ya. You. you don't want to break something and drop something and that landing on your toe, especially if it's live. Oh boy, or break the neck, so be very careful in doing this sort of thing, troubleshooting. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Hopefully it was just a dry joint. But all that dirt in there doesn't help either, so. As I showed the first half when I opened this thing up, those pots were very dirty, so it might still be a bit dicky, but next thing we do is just uh, kind of give it a, um, a bathe in electronics bath, electronics uh, electrical parts cleaner. This is quite safe to use in this sort of thing. But the only thing I risk with that, the old vintage aroma won't be there anymore. And I really don't want to um, get rid of that. I love that vintage aroma. To get the size of those um, guns, eh? This TV is unusual in every way. Yeah, that's well, another thing I really love about the CIP. Watching those heaters grow on the back of the set. Even as a kid, looking at the back of a TV set, probably not a good habit because of the x-rays, but I just love seeing those um, filaments grow in the back of the set. I really miss that. One more good look at the flyback. Unusual. That is a bloody nice speaker. Yeah. This is how you're supposed to bloody build a TV. None of this bloody smart TVs that don't last that long. And the safe crap they built the bloody spy on you and check you every move for the bastards. And like those bloody smart makers, they smart TVs, so I tell you. You have no choice but to buy a smart TV and it'll record all your conversations and recognise your voice. The webcam's built in, there's no way of disabling it. Ah, oh, it's just... I hate it. I'm going to do all I bloody can to find a way to uh, keep these things and find room for the bloody things. I have to sacrifice a couple of things to keep these. As for those two, the meters are definitely saying. If I have to downsize, well, the uh, uh, analog meters are going to stay, the digital meters are going to have to be part of the app. They're heavy, but they don't take up much space. So I can pack analog meters up, partition them in boxes between bowl wrap, or I could just grab one out when I'm going to use one, like that. Easy. 
things like that don't, don't take up much room. It's probably good in the garden shed to store things like that in. They don't take up much space. These, on the other hand, I could have a little corner in the shed, as I said. But I've, I've definitely got to have a man cave. I've got to try, if possible, if it's find a place with room. So, my, our main enemy is communists, not in this friggin' town and the, and the, the price we have to pay. That's our the main enemy is the communists, not in this town. I'm also, uh, put that aside, I'll finish this off tomorrow. Finish that off tomorrow. I'll let it run for a bit like that and see how reliable it is. If it happens again, I'll do some more research in that circuit. I'm a bit in the bullet and getting on getting there, Bunty. I've got a spare hard drive for this machine. Since this machine won't support 98 because it's too modern, I'm going to wipe that other hard drive, that old Mac store, and put the Ubuntu on it. Did some searching, searching. There's a lot of variants of Linux, but apparently this is the best one. I know there's a lot of um, compatibility issues. I may not do the things I want to do. I'm, used to, I'm so, personally, I'm so used to Windows. There will be so much apps of Windows. I'm going to face a lot of compatibility issues with Ubuntu. That's the main thing you're going to lose, is um, compatibility with that operating system. But, that's 64-bit, and that'll be really good on this machine. And that should run epic on this machine. Keep that hard drive. Have a I reckon, I reckon I may, if I can get another hard drive to fit in there, may dual boot it. One, one HDD would be Ubuntu, and the other one would be um, what I've got in there now, the XP, which has been a... Uh, Hack works quite well. This thing's up to date and got support now. I could use this thing more often. Anyway, worth having a go at this. I may, may work it on the Acer, but yeah, they, even though that Altos computer only um, won't, won't run properly because it's a server board, unfortunately, but I'll see how it goes at Ubuntu if I get a chance. See how that machine runs it, or how this handles it. Anyway, I'll finish this download off tomorrow. He's gonna be on all bloody night. they are stupid speeds now. Yeah, I think everyone's using the internet tonight. That's why it's a bit slow. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Yeah. I'm not gonna be happy if I don't have much room in my next man cave, I tell you. I'm gonna be restricted to no YouTube videos and sitting on my ass playing computer games all day. I just can't have that. I've got to have a hobby like this. This is the only hobby that gets me other minds to focus on other things, otherwise I'd just be the fucking depressed. This sort of hobby here keeps you, on you, keeps you happy. Otherwise you just go depressed, you go mad. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.